So I bought this Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus for that QT video series I was going to do earlier this year, but I never ended up using it. So in this video, we're going to be installing OpenSUSE Tumbleweed with KDE onto this little bitty Pi. So if you're using a Raspberry Pi for a desktop, which is, by the way, not really what it's meant to be used for, the most important thing about it is the SD card. And here I'm using a SanDisk Ultra Class 10 16 GB micro SD card. Now as you can see from this table, the SanDisk Ultra card that I have has a pretty okay buffered speed, but its write speed is terrible. But in the grand scheme of things, you're not really going to be doing a bunch of writes. You'll mostly be doing reads, so it shouldn't matter all that much. But it is something to be aware of as we dive into the video. And a reasonable place to start diving is the OpenSUSE website. Now to make sure you get the latest and greatest download, just jump straight to the general download directory for the images and do a search for Raspberry Pi. This is very important because this download directory has images for all of the ARM architecture that OpenSUSE supports. If it supports Raspberry Pi, it will be in the name of the image. If you try to burn one of the non-Raspberry Pi images, your Pi won't be able to boot. I learned this the hard way. Now the directions on the OpenSUSE wiki talk about using DD to directly copy the archive onto the SD card. And I mean, you can do that, it works fine, but I'm gonna use Etcher for this video because I think that's what most people wanna do. Etcher is a super handy application for doing this sort of image or ISO or compression burning to a media such as a USB or SD card or whatever. It's packaged as an app image, so you don't have to worry about it being built and packaged for your distribution, so that's awesome. And it works pretty much every time. In fact, it's the recommended tool by Raspberry Pi, so... Also, the image is pretty darn large, so it's going to take a while to burn. And it asks me for my password, like, twice, so make sure you're kind of watching it. Because if it asks for your password and you wait for too long, the burn will fail. So if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I've actually already done an OpenSUSE on a Pi video. The install is pretty much the exact same, but way faster. That old video I did on a regular Pi 3, this is a Pi 3B+, Plus, which is faster. But I'm guessing they also optimized the actual image because this was like orders of magnitude faster. The install took maybe 5 minutes. Maybe. And once we finally arrive at the login screen, you can kinda see what there is to expect here. I would say that the initial login to KDE took longer than OpenSUSE installing it, but that might just be how the image is set up. And also remember, the write speed on this SD card is painfully slow, so I mean, it's doing its best. And once we finally, finally get to the desktop, wow, is there a word that goes beyond sluggish? I wouldn't say that it's unresponsive, but it is damn close. Now in the background, you'll see me kind of fiddling with the networking and it turns out the networking doesn't really work right because you need extra firmware. I'm using Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi adapter uses some proprietary-ish firmware that isn't packaged by default. It's the exact same issue on Fedora, though I don't know how Ubuntu gets away with it. Maybe they pay Broadcom for it, I'm not exactly sure. But I will go on record saying I think that it's really sketchy that the Raspberry Pi Foundation uses proprietary drivers for their open source hobby hacking sort of Internet of Things device. Like there are alternatives to the Raspberry Pi that don't use proprietary drivers. I have no idea why the Pi does. But at any rate, that's why the Wi-Fi doesn't work. I tried it with Network Manager. I tried it with Yast. None of it worked. It's not a big deal. Installing the firmware is easy enough. I didn't do it in the video because I found out after I filmed it and I didn't want to go back. Either way, it's not a big deal. So I opened up KSysGuard so you can kind of see what's going on as far as the system resource usage. Now, the reason why it is so sluggish is because the CPU keeps peeking out. Now, there are a number of things you can do to kind of make it feel a little bit better, and I'll talk about that later. But the reason why the system just kind of hangs is because the CPU is pegged. This is a problem across any desktop environment on the Pi. Even if you boot into Raspbian and just watch the resource manager and do stuff on the desktop, it'll do the exact same thing. Given just how thread heavy KDE is, it's actually kind of surprising how well it is doing here. I mean, yes, it is sluggish, but KDE as a desktop was likely never even thought of for a device like the Pi, let alone for the ARM architecture. I have no idea what kind of process went into porting everything over to ARM, but I imagine it was a, a pretty massive effort. 
So performance issues aside, I would say that this implementation of KDE is not functional, at least not with a lot of like post install stuff with networking. And the reason for that is that it's missing like a ton of critical applications. We've got KInfo Center and we can see that it's using Plasma version 5.13 and Qt version 5.11, but it doesn't have Dolphin or Kate or Kwrite, but it does have two internet browsers and it has GIMP installed, but not Krita or Krita or whatever. It's just like a weird choosing of applications they put on here. I don't know what's going on. Maybe not everything has been ported to ARM or something. I don't, I don't really know the story, but it's not really functional out of the box. And in terms of performance tweaks, the most common tweak to the Pi is overclocking. And I didn't do that in this video. I completely spaced it, but I did turn the compositor off and I did turn file indexing off. And quite honestly, if you kind of just let the Pi sit there for a while, it actually speeds up and it's way less sluggish. So maybe there's something caching in the background and KDE is just doing normal desktop stuff and it slows everything down because of the SD card or something, I'm not really sure. But if you give it a couple minutes, it kind of starts behaving more like a normal desktop, but it still is very noticeably sluggish. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm bashing KDE in this video because I'm not. All things considered, it's impressive to see KDE running on a Pi at all. I mean, if you're a real KDE enthusiast and you just love the desktop, you could probably make do with this. It's not terrible, especially after you tweak the performance. And if you had a really fast and good SD card, it would probably be more tolerable. But yeah, it's cool to see KDE running on a Pi. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. I want to do more videos like this one and put other desktops on the Pi. So if you have any ideas or any distros you want me to check out, let me know in the comments. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.